Hi guys, welcome to Recap Kid. In today's video, we'll be recapping the events of an action thriller movie from 2022 titled Hunt. Let's get right into it. The scene opens in 1983 Washington, where a group of Korean students are protesting against their dictatorial leader. Similar protests are going on across Los Angeles and New York, and today, local Korean Americans have gathered to show resistance during the American-Korean summit. The head of the Foreign Intelligence Unit, Chief Park, arrives at the location. He promptly meets the head of the Domestic Intelligence Unit, Kim, as they'll be working together to protect the president. Meanwhile, the Director of Intelligence, Kang, meets with the CIA Director for East Asia, who expresses his opinion on President's actions, claiming that he should not have suppressed South Korean citizens using force. Then, the President of South Korea was about to arrive at the hotel when the CIA Director receives intel that a sniper is in a position to assassinate the President. Chief Park gets the news too, and he immediately stops the President's convoy on its way. The sniper is unable to have a clear shot from this distance, so he backs off, but Park and his team are already chasing him. Chaos ensues in the hall as a result of gunshots, and many members of the intelligence get killed by the sniper. Park was chasing the man when he suddenly gets blown off due to an explosion. He somehow manages himself and again starts chasing the sniper. Park intercepts the sniper and tries to neutralize him but ends up becoming a hostage. Intelligence tries to negotiate with the sniper and Park shouts that they need this man alive at all costs. However, Kim thinks the threat is too much and shoots down the man on the spot. There, Park gets angry at Kim for killing the suspect. Later in South Korea, another protest is going on in a college. The riot police arrive there and disperse the crowd using smoke grenades. Meanwhile, a young student named Yoo Jung was in her class and the teacher dismisses everyone because of the riot situation. When she was leaving, the protesters ask her to open the gate so they can escape from the police. But unfortunately, she too gets trapped in the commotion and the riot police end up beating her too. Some of the protesters, including Yu Jiang, are taken to the police station where the officer receives a call from someone and immediately frees Yu Jiang. Turns out the call was from Chief Park, who's also the father of Yu Jiang. Yu Jiang takes the injured protesters to her home for dinner, but Park is unhappy with this idea. Here, it is revealed that Park is not her actual father, but rather a caregiver. Later, Director Kang calls Park and Kim to discuss a serious matter. They have received intel that there's a mole among the intelligence itself that goes by the name Donglim. Donglim is a North Korean spy who had access to sensitive information about the president's whereabouts, and he is the reason the president got attacked in Washington. Also, the person who ignited these violent protests, namely Professor Shin, was recently arrested, so Kim needs to interrogate him. Kim directly goes to investigate the man, but all his efforts go in vain as Professor Shin doesn't reveal anything despite being tortured. The scene then changes to a laundry boy, who can be seen encrypting a coded message he received on the sleeves of a shirt. This boy is actually the messenger of Donglim, who reports to North Korean officials. Then, Park meets Kim at his home for dinner as promised. Kim's wife assumes that Park is a close colleague of Kim, but Park reveals that Kim interrogated him back in the day, and his finger nerve got damaged in the process so he can't move it properly to this day. While going home, Park gets news that a guy named Professor Pio is ready to reveal Donglim's identity, but in exchange, he needs protection from his fellow North Koreans as well as nuclear blueprints and research data. Meanwhile, there were some North Koreans who sought refuge in South Korea. However, this information was already leaked by Donglim to North Korea, so all those asylum seekers get massacred in an open field. The following day, Park and his team prepare to meet and rescue Professor Pio, but during their mission, Park argues with Agent Yang about the mission protocol. Apparently, Agent Yang has a secret mission from the Director of Intelligence, which is to learn Donglim's identity as soon as possible. Success in this mission will also guarantee his promotion, so Agent Yang prioritizes this secret mission over the decided mission of rescuing Professor Pio and learns Donglim's identity. However, this delay allows North Korean agents to intervene and they shoot down Professor Pio. Agent Yang also gets gravely injured in the process, but Park somehow saves him and escapes. After this failed mission, Park meets up with the director and tells him to resign for giving contradictory orders. When the director tries to resist, Park threatens to give proof of his corruption to the government. As a result, the director has no choice but to resign. On the other hand, Agent Yang survived the shots, but he is still in a coma, so the identity of Dong Lim is only limited to him. Park takes a little bit of a rest and meets Yu Jiang for dinner. While sitting with her, he reflects on his memories. In the past, Park was on a mission with his friend when someone attacked them and his friend sacrificed himself. In his last moments, the friend told Park to not worry as someone else will take his place and protect their chief. 
This bought tears in Park's eyes, and when he met the orphan daughter of his friend, he adopted her. Hence, Yu Jang is the daughter of Park's friend who sacrificed himself. Later, we see that a new direction has been appointed, Director An. Director An meets Kim and tells him that there's definitely a mole as so many of their missions could not have failed without the leakage of information. He orders Kim to investigate the entire foreign intelligence unit, including Chief Park. When Park learns about this, takes a sharp U-turn and goes to talk to Kim. He asks him to stop at this very moment, but Kim says he cannot do anything. This order is from the director. Just then, an emergency occurs as a North Korean fighter jet just entered their airspace. The pilot of the fighter jet is soon captured and brought to the interrogation room. Kim is interrogating him and the pilot gives them a base code which is being used by Donglim to communicate with North Korea. Seeing that psychotic pilot, Director Ahn tells Park to investigate the local intelligence unit including Kim, meaning Kim and Park will investigate each other as well as their unit. The base code received from the pilot is forwarded to the encryption department and many brilliant minds start deciphering it. Soon, a location is revealed and Kim goes to raid the place. The place being raided is the laundry we saw earlier and it turns out to even be a gun hideout. A fight breaks out there too, but an accident of grenades causes the entire building to explode. However, the overall mission was a success as it led to the discovery of another spy named Chun Bosun. Chun Bosun then did her job by forwarding information to North Korea. Later, both Kim and Park have to dig deep into each other's past. Park learns from his assistant that Kim has connections with a company called Jupiter Corp, which gave Kim a hefty sum of money just before he joined as the chief. Before we know it, Park raids the Jupiter Corp with his men and apprehends the CEO of the company named Choi. Park even goes on to torture Choi for information and the company's relation to Kim. On the other hand, Kim had his men follow Park everywhere and they heard a suspicious conversation with Ya Jang. His team arrests Ya Jung and starts digging into her past while subsequently torturing her for information. They label her as the spy Chun Bosan as she studied in North Korean schools when she was in Japan. Park can't see her daughter get tortured and he goes to the interrogation room. He asks everyone to get out and silently tells Ya Jiang to stay silent as it's the only way he can get her out. Meanwhile, Kim gets the news that Agent Yang came out of the coma, so he immediately increases safety on him. However, Agent Yang still gets killed by the sniper through the window as both the foreign and local intelligence unit were too busy fighting each other. In the aftermath of the incident, Park and Kim begin fighting each other in the hallway, calling each other a spy. At night, Kim was at his home when he recalls moments from his time in the army years ago. Their current dictatorial president ordered a massacre of innocent civilians, and the memories of that day still haunt Kim. As a result, he decides to execute the president. On the other hand, Park was with his assistant when she figures out that Park is actually Donglim and he has been leaking information all along, so Park has no option but to knock out his assistant. However, Park and his assistant's conversation was being heard by Kim's officer who was ordered to spy on them. He immediately gives Kim the breaking news and continues following Park. Park and Kim's officer get into a scuffle, but they surprisingly get abducted by a group of men. Park thinks that Kim is behind this as he knows his true identity, but his opinion changes when he sees Kim's officer gets executed. Turns out, the group that kidnapped Park belongs to the North Korean armed forces. Even North Korean intelligence is divided into two groups. One wants to end the dictatorship in South Korea peacefully, while the other wants to use violence. Just when Park was about to be executed, Kim with his men arrives there and saves Park. After that, Kim reveals that he too wants to save his country from this dictatorial leader. So he understands why Park was doing everything. The scene cuts to Bangkok, Thailand where the president will be having a summit. The intelligence as well as the president's security arrive at the hall and they all wait for the president's convoy. There, Park asks Kim why did he save him. Kim reveals that he wants Park to act as a moderator. If North Korea had been successful in killing the president, they would have immediately invaded the country. Now Kim wants to kill the president too, but he can't afford the risk of North Korea invading his country. The two argue and we see that Kim has his snipers ready in the trees to assassinate the president. The president's convoy arrives at the gate and Park runs to alert everyone of the danger as he wants the dictatorship to end peacefully. He stops the convoy but the snipers start firing at the president's car regardless. Intelligence fires in retaliation and a serious gunfight ensues. 
Kim can see his plan failing, so he himself runs to finish off the president. However, Park stops him, and the two again start to fight each other. In their scuffle, Kim fires a shot that passes through Park's stomach. Kim then runs to kill the president and holds him at gunpoint. He was about to shoot him, but another North Korean spy explodes the hall, stopping all the gunfights for a while. Taking advantage of the dust clouds, President's security manages to save him and escapes while Kim reluctantly fires at the armored car. Kim got hurt during the explosion, so Park tries to save him by stopping his blood, but he is unsuccessful and Kim dies on the spot. At his funeral, Park again recalls how his friend sacrificed himself. At the end of the movie, Park goes to meet Ya Jong, but Ya Jong points a gun at him and some men appear out of nowhere and shoot down Park on the spot. In his last moments, Park hands Ya Jung a new passport and tells her to live a better and different life. That was it for the recap, guys. Let us know in the comments if you like it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.